This morning we're going to talk about the secret of life. I'm really tackling a big one now. After you leave here this morning, you will know the secret of life. <laughs> it seems everyone is really interested when you see that magic word, secret. <laughs> Witness the popularity uh, of the movie and the book several years ago, The Secret. And uh, if you look in the self-help section of a library or a bookstore, you'll see titles like The Secret to Romance or The Three Secrets for Wealth or The Two Secrets for Weight Loss or The Ten Secrets for Good Health. And I could go on, but I think you see my point. Uh, what I love is James Taylor's famous song. He said, The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Remember that? I have to admit, uh, I think that's it. That is the secret of life. I've been a lifelong Groucho Marx fan. Everybody remember him? Or, you, uh, or am I the only old guy here? <laughs> well, he had a TV show, and he had a, the thing that came down that said, say the secret word and then get $100 or something in. Uh, I suspect he knew some of the secret of life business because he had some very funny quotes, and I'm going to share a couple with you with, and a serious one. He said, I worked my way up from nothing to an extreme state of poverty. <laughs> if you've heard this story before, don't tell me. <laughs> Marriage is a wonderful institution, but who wants to live in an institution? He says, getting older is no problem. You just have to live long enough. Uh, I intend to live forever or die trying. <laughs> well, one of his serious quotes that I came across and that I love, really, it says this, I, I, not events, have the power to make me happy or unhappy today. I can choose which it shall be. Yesterday is dead. Tomorrow hasn't arrived yet. I have just one day today, and I'm going to be happy in it. I like that. It was a little over 70 years ago that Watson and Crick gave us the scientific breakthrough of what they call the secret of life, which was the DNA molecule. All DNA, it seems, carries the information and instructions for making living things from generation to generation. There's one aspect they left out, however, which is DNA doesn't tell us how to live. And how we live is the most important information that we could obtain. It's interesting that in our day and time, we know that even DNA can be influenced by something we call consciousness, or your mind, your heart, your consciousness, or if you will, thoughts, beliefs, ideas, and feelings influence DNA in yourself and in others. To me, this secret of life has been about a relationship, See, a relationship. Now, I'm not talking about romantic relationships, although the secret I'm talking about would include that. Eckhart Tolle Eckhart Tolle sort of described what I have in mind when he said this, the primordial relationship in your life is your relationship with the now. If your relationship is dysfunctional, this will show up in every situation and every relationship you encounter. Ooh. Say ooh. <laughs> so it's important to understand that whatever we're doing now is telling us something about what we believe. What we believe about life, what we believe about ourselves, what we believe life holds for us. You see, we are all on this great journey, I think. This great journey, which I'll put it this way, is to find God. Uh, you know, every culture that has ever been upon the face of this earth has developed and practiced some kind of spirituality, some kind of a relationship to what we could call God or to life or to the now. 
because I think that's what we really are is spiritual beings having a human experience. We look here and we look there and we try this. And we become a Baptist and a Methodist and a Quaker and a Hindu and a Buddhist. And we try scientific rationalism. But there at the depths of logic and reason, we don't find that personal warmth of the heart in every human heart that's there. Robert Fulgham, after he had been in a Zen Buddhist monastery in Japan for a while, said he had been a thirsty man looking for a drink while standing knee-deep, flowing in water. <laughs> I like that. I think this is why Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is not low here or low there. The kingdom of heaven is within. The kingdom of heaven is where? Within. Important for you to really get that and not just say the words. Oh, I've heard that the kingdom of heaven is within. But it is. Well, if the kingdom of heaven is within, it leads us to this point. The first place is within right here and right now. Right here and right now. So all of our worries about tomorrow and all of our guilts and regrets about yesterday are simply ways we've distracted ourselves from seeing there is a... A, a lovely, fabulous, intelligent, powerful, creative, unique version of God that has come here to be let loose on this planet. Let loose to serve and to create and to grow and to enjoy life. And that unique version of God is you. That unique version of God is you. Letting yourself become distracted by fears and doubts and ought to's and shoulds and the like will only provide more fuel for the engine of I can't and I'm not good enough. When all the time your whole spiritual journey is about discovering the you you really are is so magnificent that it's beyond description, at least to your human mind. So as Eckhart Tolle said, this is your primordial relationship to be you. <laughs> Thoreau, one of those transcendentalists to whom we owe so much, said, if I be not I, who will be? <laughs> if I be not I, who will be? <laughs> Good question. You know, years ago, and it is amazing to me that it was that long ago, but, it, <laughs> but when I first came to Nashville, uh, I came, I know this is going to sound unusual and crazy to you, but I came to Nashville to be a singer and a songwriter. Can you imagine that in Nashville? <laughs> well, and I was for a while, and I had some success at it. Some, not the greatest, but I had some. And yet, something, and every time I would reach for something, it didn't quite fit. Until, and I started reading something. There wasn't a science of mind church here, and I had a couple of classes. And I tried to get a minister to come here. And uh, so I started holding a class thinking, well, maybe, you know, a minister will come and we'll have it going that way. But then the people in the class said, why don't you do it? And I went, yeah, but I'm not. I, you know, I can't do that. And then I got home and went, something about that really feels right. Something about that feels like it's me. And, hmm. Suddenly, I started going there every Sunday and doing this. I didn't have the proper documentation, you see. I hadn't had the classes. I hadn't had the stuff. But I want you to know something. When you're you, God doesn't care what you have. God sets you up to be you and says, right, be it. If you want the thing, do the thing. So, so, I started the thing. And it felt right from the beginning. And it felt right to me. 
And that's the important thing. <laughs> uh, I've observed over my life that to get what you want, you have to feel good. And you have to feel good about you. Is everyone understanding me? Because I want you to understand, I was listening to Sean's song about losing your mind. And someone asked me once, he said, Mitch, have you lost your mind? And I said, several times. <laughs> I wanted to lose that mind that was worried and doubtful. I wanted to lose that mind that was afraid. I wanted to lose that mind that couldn't see me being something new. I wanted to lose that mind that didn't know how it was going to work out. I wanted to lose that mind that kept telling me, you're no good, and beside that, life sucks, and so do you. <laughs> I know none of you are familiar with this mind. <laughs> and I did. And I lost it several times, but each time I lost it, it was a little easier to find the mind in me, as Paul said, that was also in Christ Jesus, who did not consider it robbery to be equal to God. Oh, that mind. So I was glad to find that mind. So I've observed in my life that to get what you want, you have to be, feel good about yourself and life. But you understand, if at the base of your thinking you don't think you're any good and you don't like yourself, the law of attraction can only bring you more people, situations, and events to prove to you that you're no good and not likable. Does everyone understand that? Because I hope you do. Because if you do, your whole life can change, my friend. It can change right here and right now. We didn't come here to be somebody else, somebody we think is better than us. We came here to be ourselves with our own unique talents and perspectives and sense of wonder, and we came here to be who we really are. If I be not I, who will be? Let's say that. If I, if I be, not I, be not I, who will be? You know, you got to put your arms up like you mean it, guy. You know? If I, if I be, not I, be not I, who will be? Who will be? That's right. <laughs> uh, that's why this primordial relationship we have with life is so important because it's a reciprocal. You know that word, reciprocal? It means like for like. It reciprocates. It responds in kind to the thoughts, ideas, and feelings, and love or lack of love that we give it. Hmm. I must admit this idea seems at odds, seems to be hidden from so many people. It does indeed come close to being the secret of life. It would certainly get my vote for it. <laughs> Why do we ignore, often to our peril, this classic idea that has been handed down by the good and the great through the ages that is now being proven in scientific circles? What these great teachers and founders of religions have pointed out to us. I guess we keep hoping that life works some way other than the way it works. But the ancient writers of the book of Jeremiah wrote, call unto me, see, call unto the all that is, call unto whatever your idea of God is, the quantum field of limitless potential and possibility, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Wow. See, I'll tell you something. You want to see some of those great things that you know us not? You know, one thing you can do is you can imagine something and that can create it. But there's something missing from that statement. 
The thing that's missing from that statement is how you feel. How you feel. <laughs> how you feel. You have to start feeling good about yourself. You have to start feeling good about life. You have to be, and that starts with the simple idea of gratitude. <laughs> because gratitude is close in vibration because people can measure the vibration of gratitude and people can measure the vibration of love and people can measure the vibration of joy now. You can see it in people's brains from MRIs when one thing happens and the other doesn't. But in joy and in gratitude, brains light up in different places. And if you do it enough times, if you just say thank you enough times, you don't have to feel it right away, but I guarantee you something. You keep saying thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you, and there's enough energy out here in the universe. There's enough energy out here in the universe like it that it matches up with it. And all the people that are thinking thank you and thank you feels you, and you start feeling it. Where? In your heart. But you have to practice it. You can't get up one morning and say, well, God, thank you for today. I hope it's not like yesterday. <laughs> because, you see, you're placing your attention on what was. You're placing your attention on something stupid that has already gone on. Some mistake perhaps you made or somebody else has made. Does it matter if in the long run you want to be happy and healthy and vital and whole? No. What matters is, ha, ha, ha. Maybe that's what matters. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right now, right here, in this place, this time, right now, my primordial relationship is pretty good with me. I'm pretty damn wonderful. Uh, some of you went, oh, he said damn again. <laughs> well, I am pretty wonderful. But the thing is, you are too. You are this unique individuation of all that is. See, but we call unto God, as Jeremiah said, with our thoughts. We call unto God with our visions, our feelings. And we call unto God with our gratitude. And God always answers in kind. The kind of thought with the kind of experience. The kind of feeling with the kind of situation. God answers by reciprocating, reproducing our experience or circumstance that resembles the way we are calling. Do you understand? And here's the thing. When we call in faith believing when we call with love in our heart, when we call with gratitude, we are willing to become that which we are calling for. We are willing to change our consciousness to match the circumstance or the situation that we want to experience. This intelligence greater than we are shows us that we can, we can have, be, or do that something even better, something even greater than what we think can happen, all because of a feeling of gratitude and love and joy. That's the basis of who we think we are. <laughs> our whole job is to select our thoughts that will provoke the feelings. I'm going to say it again. To select, choose, have, say, do, Think, despite what else is going on in your life, the thought that will evoke the feeling. Wow. How do you do that? People say to me all the time. It's very simple. Just close your eyes. Just think of something you love. I don't care. It could be a place, a puppy, a kitten, your child, your loved one. And when you have them in your mind now, see them smiling and raise your hand when you have it. Everyone got that? Do you understand? You've just evoked a feeling. That's how simple it is. 
you evoke that feeling over and over and over until it becomes habituated in you. And it comes out automatically from you now. Oh, yeah. It's about love. It is about love. So that is part of this secret of life. You've just done it. <laughs> Another important part is to be found in the serenity prayer. Remember the serenity prayer? Any 12-steppers in here? You know what I'm talking about. By Reinhold Niebuhr in the late 30s, he wrote this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. <laughs> I like that. See, God grant me the serenity of what? The calmness, the steadiness, the resolve, the serenity. <laughs> God grant me the serenity, the peace of mind to accept the things I cannot change. Let me give you an example of things I cannot change. We cannot change. Reverend Barry Ebert uh, was the youth minister at the Mile High Church in Denver, and he offers parenting workshops there. Now, the parents who come all know what needs to change. Their kids' behavior needs to change, right? So he says parenting... Well, I say good luck with that. <laughs> you know. He says, parenting is a self-improvement workshop our children trick us into taking. <laughs> and you parents out there know what I mean, right? Because of this reflective nature of the universe, children very often and sometimes <laughs> inevitably reflect back to us the things we find most annoying in ourselves. <laughs> like... Where did he pick that up? Or why is she doing that? Sound familiar? <laughs> well, if you've been around the science of mind and spirit for a while, you begin to understand we can't change others. We can't change others. Try as we may. That's like looking into the mirror and trying to comb the hair in the mirror and wondering why your hair doesn't change. You ever notice that? Huh. So relationships of any kind are pinned on the one we have with spirit, which is where? Within ourselves. Whatever version of God we come up with, this relationship can give us serenity. And then we know, and people have to be free. People have to be free to make their own choices. The next part of the serenity prayer is just as important. It says, the courage to change the things I can. And it does indeed take courage to change. <laughs> I remember years ago while attending a science of mine church in Los Angeles, I wanted to believe, you know what I mean, I wanted to believe this stuff they were talking about. It all sounded good on Sundays, and I took a few classes, and good things started happening. But I thought they were just coincidences. But one night I knew in a dark night of the soul that I was having that I had to decide, did I really buy into this metaphysical stuff or not? You know, sometimes we have to get hit with the cosmic two-by-four <laughs> before we can muster enough courage to say, I want to change. I want to change this. I want this to be different. <laughs> God grant me the courage. And the moment I did that, the so-called coincidences of good things got more and more regular. Why? Because I learned I have to model the change I want to see in the world. I have to model it. You know what modeling is? So I look at the great teachers like Jesus and Buddha and Lao Tzu and many other great ones. They all did that. They modeled love, respect, tolerance, goodwill, service to life. And if we want something different in our expression and experience of life, we will have to model it. We'll have to become the example of it. 
uh, over the years, you know, people would come to me uh, when I was the in charge here. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not. <laughs> but when I was, they come to me and say, why don't you do this? And I'd say, you're just the person to do it. <laughs> and then they'd get mad and walk away. <laughs> but you see, life is about modeling what you want to have. Life is about modeling what you want to see. <laughs> As Emerson said, if you want a friend, be a friend. <laughs> so if we know what we can change and we know what we can't, then it follows. We have the wisdom to know the difference. <laughs> that, incidentally, is especially true of our children. They will automatically take on what we model they already have. So put it this way. We have to show up in life like what we want is really so. Hmm. I know it can be difficult to do that, but maybe it's difficult at first. But I tell you, one easy pathway you can start doing that we've learning in our Law of Attraction class is this. You simply have to start feeling good. Feel the best you can. You simply have to start being grateful. You want, and I'll give you this example that I gave in the class. And people are doing it and having great results. Every morning you write down ten things. And I mean write it down with your hand, long hand. Or type it out. Type it out on your computer or your phone. Ten things you are grateful for. I am so grateful that I've got a wonderful bed to get up from. <laughs> you see, 10 different things every day. You can do that. And send it to someone who holds you accountable, and they'll send 10 to you. And I tell you, something funny happens, see, when you get that little bit of information that from them that says, I am so grateful for my bed. And you think, you know, I'm so grateful for my bed, too. And you start feeling a little better. Do you hear me? You start feeling a little better. And then you say, I, and you start writing down, well, I am so grateful that I've got a wonderful car that gets me everywhere I want to go. And then your friend sees that and says, oh, I'm so grateful for that too. And they start feeling a little better. And by the time, so you only spend a few minutes. What is it, 10 minutes maybe? 15? 20 to change your life? So you do that, you do that, and you do that, and you build this reservoir of good feelings. You build this reservoir in your enlightenment circle, the scientists tell us is in your brain, and that enlightenment circuit starts really, yeah, and pretty soon you've got a nice relationship with yourself built on what? Love and gratitude and joy instead of what are they doing to me? They aren't doing anything to you that you're not letting them. Huh. There's a fine line. You know, I'm going to say something about courage. Courage is simply the willingness to be afraid and to do it anyway. <laughs> There's a fine line between... Anxiety and excitement. Because you can turn that anxiety into excitement if you want to. <laughs> so that's a kind of blueprint for modeling I just gave you. Uh, I'm going to share this story because it's about kids because we've been talking about it. It's supposedly a true story that I got from another minister some years back. And uh, it seems that one of his congregants went to a traditional church with her young daughter. And during a Sunday sermon at this traditional church, the minister said, Dear Lord, you know, with his arms extended, he said, Dear Lord, without you, we are but dust. And the little girl was four years old, looked up at me in a shrill voice, and she said, 
Mom, what's butt dust? <laughs> so it's important in this secret of life to, to understand you're not butt dust. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me say this to you, that I know some people are going through some stuff today, and I'm not trying to pretend that it's easy for you, but I'm just going to give you one liner here you can write down or keep in your mind. I got this from Maya Angelou. She said, every storm runs out of rain. Every storm runs out of rain. And it do so quickly when you remember that your heart is meant to love. Your heart was meant to feel good. Your heart was meant to show your head how you're supposed to be. <laughs> wow. Thank you. So, I'll close kind of with this idea. I got this from Richard Bach years ago. I was fascinated with it. Uh, he said, remember Richard Bach, Jonathan Livingston Seagull and all? He said, to bring anything into your life, imagine that it's already there. Wow. I love that. But I'll say to you, it's easier to imagine that it's already there when you feel good about yourself. So when you start feeling good about yourself and start being grateful to life, grateful for this experience of life, I am so grateful to be alive and to be you, this unique personage that God created me to be. That's the truth about you. I am grateful for what I have, and I'm grateful for all the good things coming my way. That's a pretty good one, guy. Say this, I am grateful, I am grateful for, everything for everything I have, I have. and I am, so I am so grateful for all the good things, all the good things. coming my way. And they are, if you will. <laughs> well, friend, please keep in mind, you are unique. You are special. You are the light of God on this planet. As Jesus said, don't hide it under a bushel basket. Be proud of it. Love it. Feel the joy of it. And move forward with it. That's what you're supposed to do. Model it. And so it is. Welcome to the Sunday service at CSLN. We are a welcoming and inclusive community of inspired individuals caring for and about each other and the entire planetary family. The Center for Spiritual Living Nashville offers spiritual tools for anyone seeking a more fulfilled and meaningful life through a deeper connection with a higher power or universal truths. Be sure to subscribe below if you enjoy our programs.